Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is an in and out tutorial for Final Cut Pro 10. Today I'm going to talk about the ins and outs of the trim tool. Trimming clips is an essential part of editing and the trim tools in Final Cut 10 have undergone a major revision from Final Cut 7. Let's take a look at how it works and see if there are any tricks to using it. Here's a small sequence with some clips in the primary storyline as well as a few connected clips and also some connected audio clips. I want to start trimming, but there's something I need to do first. Go to the Preferences. In the first tab, called Editing, check the box that says Show Detailed Trimming Feedback. Honestly, I don't know why this preference isn't on by default. Having it off offers absolutely no help, and it's really necessary for just about any kind of trimming operation. What the preference does is show two windows in the viewer when trimming. I'll just grab the trimming tool and show you. The trimming tool is available here. But the shortcut is just as easy to remember. T equals trim. Hitting T will change the cursor to this trim icon. However, when you hover over an edit point, the cursor changes depending on whether you're on the left side, the right side, or the center of the edit point. I'm just going to click the center of this edit point and drag for a bit. This is called a rolling trim, where the media of one clip rolls over the media of another. The overall length of the project doesn't change when you perform a rolling trim because whatever frames you add to one clip are being subtracted from the other. Up here, the viewer is showing two frames that are updated as I drag. This is the detailed trimming feedback that is referred to in the preferences. If the preference is turned off, you would only see the change in the endpoint of the left side clip. This way, I can see how the trim affects both clips at the same time. The left viewer is showing me the last frame from the left clip, and the right viewer shows me the first frame of the right clip. In the right clip, there's a bit of a camera shake that's at the beginning of the shot. If I drag to the right, I can overwrite that shake with the end of the previous shot. When I think I've got it down, I'll preview the edit to see how it looks. Okay, well it's not perfect, but it's better than before. By the way, I have the skimmer active right now, as you can see by this icon in the timeline. However, some of the edit tools in Final Cut come with their own skimming options. I'm going to turn off the skimmer here, but keep the trim tool active. Watch as I skim over any clip, a little mini skimmer is visible, and the frame is being updated in the viewer. But if I lift the cursor above any clip so that I'm no longer over a clip, I can no longer skim. The image in the viewer is still from whatever frame my mini skimmer was on when I brought it up. It's going to stay like that until I hit play or reposition the playhead. So even with the skimmer turned off, the trim tool still allows for some skimming. Now it's important to know that rolling trims are not possible with connected clips. Here I have two clips acting as B-roll above my primary storyline. As I skim over them, you can see that they're right next to each other and there's no black area in between the clips. But try as I might, I can't select the center of this edit point to make a rolling edit. It will only ever select one edge or the other. This is because even though those clips are butted up against each other, they are not connected in any way to each other, so Final Cut doesn't recognize it as an edit point. They are just two separate clips whose end point and start point happen to coincide. Now, if I take the trim tool and hover over to the left or right of one of my storyline clips, I can do what's known as a ripple trim or a ripple edit. I'm just going to select the left side of this line clip and drag to the right. Note that the entire project gets longer or shorter when you do a ripple trim, because frames are being added or subtracted to one clip, but nothing at all is happening to any of the other clips. Of all the ways to trim using the trim tool, this is probably the least needed. Why is that? Well, it's because of the magnetic timeline. The trim tool is really unnecessary for performing ripple edits in Final Cut 10. Remember in Final Cut 7, if you grabbed the edge of a clip with the selection tool and dragged, you could open up a gap between it and the clip that it was next to. To keep the clips touching, you would need to use the ripple tool or else perform the edit in two steps by moving the edge of one clip and then deleting the gap. The ripple tool is a very useful tool in Final Cut 7 or Avid or any nonlinear editing program. In Final Cut 10 though, any trim that you make with the selection tool is going to be a ripple edit by default. 
Watch, I'm going to hit A on the keyboard to switch back to my selection tool, and then grab the edge of my clip and drag. As you can see, I'm performing a ripple trim. The magnetic timeline forces all clips in the primary storyline to remain together. But there are two other very useful trims that the trim tool can do. Down here in my audio, I've got a couple of clips of music. I'll hit T to make the trim tool active again, and this time hover anywhere in between the first clip. Again, the cursor icon has changed to reflect another trim tool. When I click and drag, I perform a slip trim, or a slip edit. A slip edit is similar to a rolling edit. I'm adding frames to one side and subtracting them from the other, but I'm doing it to the same clip. You perform a slip edit when you're happy with the length of a clip, but you just want to use a different in and out point. Performing trims to audio clips doesn't give you any detailed feedback from the viewer though. You're just going to see a black frame unless you're trimming video. So when slipping audio clips, make sure that you can see the waveforms in the project. It's your best way to see what's going on. Now, if I slide the clip too far, you can see it here, one side turns red to let you know that there's no more media on that side of the clip. In my case, it's, uh, I'm at the beginning of the song. And if I attempt to slip the edit on the other audio clip, nothing at all happens. It's red on both sides. This means that all the media for this clip is already in the timeline, and there's no extra that I can use to slip. Now, slipping video works just the same. I'm going to slip this clip so that the end of the shot coincides with this person leaving the frame. Okay, the last of the basic trim functions is the slide trim. To perform a slide, I just need to hold down the option key when I click and drag inside a clip. The cursor icon changes when I hold option down to let me know that I'm about to slide this clip. When I drag, notice how the entire clip is sliding between its neighbor clips. The length of the selected clip never changes. It's the clips to the left and the right that are actually getting trimmed. Now there's one more thing I want to show you regarding the trim tool. I'm going to go to the timeline switch and I'm going to choose this view because it gives me the largest view of the audio while still showing video. Then I'm going to double click on the waveform of this clip to expand it so that I can see the audio section apart from the video section. I'll do the same to the clip next to it. When clips are expanded like this, you can edit the in and out points of the audio separate from the video. I'm going to switch back to the trim tool using the T shortcut. Just like with connected clips, I am unable to select both audio edges at the same time to perform a rolling edit. I can select one side or I can select the other, but I can't select both. If I go up here and click though, I can actually select the video only and perform a rolling edit for the video, leaving the audio where it is. Keep this in mind if you're editing a scene with dialogue. What you'll want to do is you'll want to cut to the audio of the scene and then expand the clips and trim the video independently. Keeping the trim tool selected, if I click in the center of the audio portion of the clip, I can perform an audio only slip edit. The only thing is, it's not a slip edit at all. Watch as I click and drag the audio portion of the clip. Note the waveforms. What's happening is really more of a slide edit than a slip edit. The audio is sliding its position in the timeline, but it's remaining in sync with the video that it's connected to. Final Cut tries to keep clips with embedded audio like this one in sync at all times. In fact, if I try to perform a slide edit on the audio only by holding down the Option key, notice how Final Cut just does a regular slide edit on the entire clip. All right, any way you cut it, trimming is a very powerful way to help you with your editing. I'm Andy Neal, and these are the ins and outs of the trimming tool.